Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from The Technology Firm. Today we're going to investigate ICMB host unreachable messages. I'm going to jump right into it since I have a bit of a sore throat. I was asked to clean up a network, so I started with a simple packet capture. No spam port, SNMP taps, etc, etc. I saw some ICMP host and reachable packets. When I asked the analyst about them, he was a bit confused since he was capturing at the same time and did not see any ICMP host and reachable packets. Long story short, we found out his firewall security software was preventing Wireshark from capturing ICMP packets. So I explained, I always capture with no firewall enabled, just to be sure I'm not missing anything. As just a, a point of protocol, you might want to consider your troubleshooting computer, um, not have a firewall right while you're troubleshooting and you can always turn it back on later. The reason why I say it like that is some companies have policies or don't give you admin access but they should give you a way to be able to turn on and off the firewall with your troubleshooting stuff. Okay. Analyst said he noticed that their network monitoring system was reporting an increase in ICMP error messages after they installed a new test router at a remote office. Since there was no customer complaints, they just ignored the alerts. And I always say that's kind of a, uh, a bad thing, right? You should always find out why you get these messages. Fortunately, I was able to reproduce the issue in the lab. So in the following slides, I'll walk you through what the ICMP host and reachable is, the methodology I used, and how we resolved the issue. So as a client, me, switch, there's your firewall, router, NAT, all in one little box, and there's the good old internet. And you could see uh, my computer um, was going off to try to find a printer. It's what it's doing in the background. I didn't have to do anything, just my PC doing what it does. And it sends a SNMP packet. A lot of people don't know that. Your network printers, uh, by default, will use SNMP to check statuses and whatnot. So that's me trying to find my printer. It's not going to find it, right? That's that 192.168.1 address is not on this network at all. So the router is configured with a default route. So if it's not here, then go here to the internet, and that's what it does. This guy, 10.99.92.228, is the internet provider, the, uh, yeah, the internet, the ISP. The ISP's box comes back and says, hey, destination unreachable, host unreachable, what are you doing, right? So the goal would be to eliminate these error messages, because this is what that management box is probably seeing. And... 192.168.0.0 is a private addressing range and shouldn't be routed to the internet at all, right? So that's kind of the, the point of it all. And for the people who don't know, there are three ranges, class A, B, and C addresses that are non-routable, right? You've got the 10 address, the 172, you've got 192 address as well. And you can find all those details anywhere on the internet, but they're called non-routable private IP addresses. So we went on to the router. And there was a cool little setting here. It said black hole. That sounds kind of ominous. Black hole. Black hole was defined by the vendor as a route that drops unwanted traffic. So we thought, hey, there we go. The destination network would be 192.168.0.0 with a 16-bit mask. And a description. We just put something in there to have a description. Well, interestingly enough, now the host unreachable from the ISP goes away. But now we can see the router, 10.44.10.1, saying destination unreachable network unreachable so the host became a network unreachable message now as well so we we kind of moved the problem <laughs> the reporting problem from the external side to the internal side so if you want to look at it some positive way then yeah we were kind of fixing the problem then we tried routing all 192.168.0.0 to something called the loopback address depending on your vendor you could get away with this where you just flip it internally and it just dies and goes away. Uh, so make sure you check your vendor stuff and see if it's possible and it's not going to cause a problem, right? Uh, and the router complained that's not possible. You can't do loopback stuff. So we thought, nah, well, there goes that. Then we saw a destination interface of its internal switch, right? Even though it's a router, it's also like a kind of little switch and it had this interface called switch and we thought, oh, that might do it. So now the original ICMP network unreachable message that we just saw is now again a host unreachable message but it's still from the router so we're kinda of keeping it at least in our network right and so it's important for you to to test this stuff out and a little tip on that other slide that I missed was how do you filter this stuff out because you can see it's packet 6 and 18 well see that original message the SNMP one 
if you go into the IP header, there's something called an identifier, and you filter on that, and it will actually find the corresponding ICMP packet. If you have the ICMP packet, go within the ICMP header, find the IP header of the originating packet, and filter on its IP identifier, and that would do that as well. And this only works with IP version 4, by the way, okay? So now we thought, okay, now what are we going to try? Well, let's route back to an external switch. So we have a switch literally there. And I thought, let's pick on him. We'll fire off the ICMP uh, error messages um, to him. I'm sorry, not the ICMP error messages. We will route all 192.168 to that poor lonely switch, who's not even routing. But at least it'll go somewhere and just die and see if that does it. So that's what we tried here. And the switch was 1044.10.37. So anything that we want to route to that gets sent to this guy. And it looks like it works. So now when I send out this request, I don't see the ICMP error message. Um, everybody reading this or looking at this right now will say, whoa, you didn't fix anything. You just moved the problem. Well, hold on a second. This was a last ditch effort, right? It's a band-aid solution. The proper solution would be not to use a default route for private IP subnets, right? Or filter out 192.168.0.0 from the internal interface. Fortunately, ran out of time uh, to test the router filtering firewall options. We just literally ran out of time. So if I get a chance in, in a few more months, I'll get back to it and I'll show you if there was even an option to fix that. And the client was okay since this was a test router, right? I posted a question on the vendor support forum. Uh, no response yet. And unfortunately, this vendor only provides support via their community forum. There's no email, there's no phone number, there's no paid option, and that sort of thing. So I told the client that support should be a critical element of the product evaluation because when you do run into issues like this it'd be nice to call a local sales engineer or a uh, support desk or what even if you had to pay right at least you have an option and this vendor doesn't provide any of that so there you go hope that helps have a good day bye for now